Okay, we are just we had a discuss about uh, what you mean inbound process and all these things. Yeah. Okay, Th this is the where I'm going to start now. Okay, quickly. Uh, as I said, like, you know, typical uh, warehouse process, you know, it starts with inbound processing and uh, again, storage and operations and another one outbound process. What do you mean by inbound process? Where it starts with inbound process? Okay, how many inbound process we have in a, a typical uh, warehouse um, operations? So as you know, that inbound process, it starts from, for example, if you have a warehouse, but you need some raw material, you need some finished goods, or you may, you may need any semi-finished goods. Okay, then where it starts, it starts with you plan the purchasing, right? So if you want something, you plan for purchasing. Then there is a purchasing department. So that purchasing department will place an order that's called purchase order to get the, some products either finished or semi-finished um, semi or uh, any other things. Okay? And it starts from the uh, purchase order, organize the purchase order, there is an inbound delivery. And against the inbound delivery, uh, we perform and uh, unloading and, uh, you know, staging. Sometimes, you know, if product is complex and uh, it go undergo deconsolidation, if any labeling activities or uh, further things, so we will value added service and uh, we will put into final storage locations. Okay. Uh, typically is like, you know, a vendor process. You can say a, a inbound starts with the vendor. So vendor process. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay. There are a case and, you know, it, it starts, you may receive from uh, one, you have a company, but where you have a uh, two plants, you know, so you can transfer between the two plants. That is called the stock transfer order. That means within the company, one plant to another plant. So one plant requests some some raw material, finished goods, semi-finished goods, and other plants will send it. Okay. So through the stock transfer order, you are going to receive the goods. That is also part of inbound process. Apart from these two, you have other things like you know there are occasions where, okay, you from your warehouse you delivered product to the customer. Okay, during that time. And you, some means like, you know, there is a, some damage, something like, you know, and maybe customer may not like, he, he can send it back to us. Okay? So that is called a customer returns. Okay. Customer returns is also part of inbound process. Okay. So, but also uh, like, you know, in the inbound process, what are the activities you, you perform? When you perform inbound process in a EWM, we, when you receive the, inbound request, we can call as inbound request. You connect this inbound request to the transportation unit. I will explain what you mean transport in it next level. Okay. Transport unit means is a, is a trial, is a vehicle. You know, you, uh, in a system wise, you connect a transport unit and uh, by attaching our warehouse request. Now, warehouse request means what? It is contains the handling units, all these things. Okay. And uh, how you are going to goods receipt, how you are going to manage it, all optimization. So all these things we discuss in inbound processing. And also inbound process, you cover your quality management. What do you mean call quality management? So sometime, you know, as a quality, when you receive the products, see, there are like some occasions you may randomly you, you check the some samples saying, okay, all the products are in good quality. And there are, as I said, customer returns. Customer returns definitely should undergo quality before going to put it a final put away or before going to send to the scrap area. Okay, that's the one thing. And, then, and also in the routing, internal routing, how when you receive the product, how the product should go, whether it is a floor, whether it is a racks, whether it is a the, you know mezzanine location and so on. So how we can route that, you know, so under this inbound process. And also inbound process is going to cover even uh, advanced production management where, you know, you, for example, you have a company where you manufacture some of the items after the manufacturing the product. So you may not deliver to the direct to the customer. So what you do is you, you produce the products and you will uh, put it back to the warehouse. Okay. That means, you know, um, 
even uh, uh, return uh, manufacturing process is also comes under the inborn process. Okay. This is a typical inborn process. Vendor, through the vendor, stock transfer order, okay, customer returns, and the production, uh, production orders also. These are the typical inbound, uh, we call it inbound process. Okay. First, uh, what do you mean outbound process? Okay. Outbound process means it starts from the uh, from the customer. Okay. Customer means the uh, who's supposed to place an order. Okay. When a customer will place an order, the against the uh, order, we prepare a sales order. Against the sales order, we prepare outbound process. Um, means outbound delivery can say that, but don't worry about terminology, but uh, the outbound delivery. Then warehouse people will start picking, packing, staging, loading, and PZ, I means goods issue like. So it starts with that, okay? But to perform outbound process, it starts, as I said, it starts from the sales. Then there is a sales department required here. How we discuss in bound process where purchasing is required, purchasing involvement is there. And uh, inbound is also, you know, you they have a material control team is also inbound. Inbound, material control team look after all the material, how much material required per that year, you know, uh, per month or per week, per day. So there is a material control team is also involved even uh, between in, inbound and outbound. They integrate, they see that, you know, how much stock is here in a warehouse, how much stock we need. So they will plan, okay, through the, through the purchasing. Uh, purchase uh, uh, requests or some purchase uh, orders. Okay, as I said, outbound it starts from the sales. Okay, so there is you should understand that. Okay, sales, but there is a sales. The sales department is there. They look after all these orders, and they they create outbound deliveries, whether it's a through bad job or manual job. So the warehouse, you know, based on that uh, our deliveries, so they will do warehouse activities. Okay. And a typical, what kind of outbound uh, uh, orders we have? As in a typical scenario, in any a complex scenarios, we we treat as a standard deliveries. Like standard deliveries may not be the like you know you quickly deliver. And the standard deliveries we categorize. We also categorize the rust deliveries, and also we categorize as a stock transfer orders also. Like you know, um, uh, as I said, you are sending from your plant to the, your different plant. See, that's what stock transfer order, it comes as inbound, it comes as outbound process. And uh, sometimes we we, uh, we also say, within a standard, we have a several customer orders. The, uh, we can always, uh, again, categorize within standard orders, like, you know, whether it is a, a domestic orders, whether it is a export orders, like that. Same thing, another one, rush orders. Rush orders means you get order, but you will deliver within a day or next day or so on. Okay. There also, you cannot categorize the, Again, whether it is a domestic order within the country or export or outside the country. And also here also you see, and there are occasions, you know, uh, you receive the goods from the warehouse, okay, from uh, through the purchase order. But due to some damage happened when you receive the, after checking the quality. So you have to return back to the, again, supplier. So vendor return process. Okay, here vendor return process is also part of outbound process. Okay, vendor return process. Okay, and also sometimes kits is also part of that in the kitting. Okay, is also uh, is outbound process, and also material. Uh, as I said, um, uh, even uh, uh, what you can production orders is also part of outbound process. As we said, if you have a manufacturing industry, manufacturing company where you are trying to produce a product. But you need to uh, uh, requ raw material requirement, right? Or semi-finished goods require. So you issue the goods for the production, you know, for uh, uh, for um, maybe assembling or um, uh, manufacturing or that. Okay. Even the production orders also come into the outbound process. Inbound it comes and outbound comes because after uh, assembly or manufacturing, again you will put it back to the inbound, right? That's it. Okay. And we will discuss what do you mean of outbound planning. We, you know, the typical in a real scenario, any warehouse, you, you know, you may not receive one or two orders. You may receive hundreds of orders. If it's a, some, uh, uh, how you perform, how you capture is the performance of warehouse. It depends on number of lines you 
you pick it, you release it, all the things in a warehouse terminology. Okay. Uh, depends on that, you know, how many orders you received and how you plan it, you know. Are you going to combine some of the orders into, uh, 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 combined into uh, one, uh, one waves or like, you know, how you are going to manage it, okay. So imagine if some customer placed the three, four orders, are we go because we are going to deliver same, same location that's called ship to party or sold to party, okay. And also uh, some of the orders we received at the same location is uh, like, you know, going to the, uh, the same country, okay, how we can plan the route, okay. So how we can optimize like, you know, such a way that, you know, you can minimize the picking, you know, movements or optimize, improve the warehouse efficiency. So all these things we will uh, uh, will plan and we will do in outbound process. Okay? All picking, optimization, packing and staging. And also load management, how you load it all. Okay. And as analytics report at the end of the, uh, sorry, I missed in the uh, storage operations. Yeah. And once you know that inbound, outbound, you know, little bit knowledge on that. And uh, as, as always, you know, you need to look after in the stock, how much stock is there in the way, physical stock lying in the warehouse. Okay. And how to check the uh, system stock. Whether system stock and the physical stock is always matching. How we need to adjust the stock. Whether we need to create a physical invented document such a way that you physically count it and adjust the stock. Okay. Always system stock should be the same. Okay. System and physical. But in a, in a big warehouse, imagine is, is it possible for us to check every bin? Not possible, right? So sometime, you know, we do annually, sometime we do six months, we do is a um, uh, ad hoc basis. Okay, depends on that. Okay, physical inventory is a big activity in the warehouse. Okay, how inbound, how important, the outbound. Similarly, is the physical inventory is the one of the major, major uh, operations in the warehouse. Okay. I can say minimum 10, 15 people work in a medium-sized warehouse in a only physical inventory. Okay, they, they, they see that, you know, the stock, always adjusting stock and checking the stock. Okay, another replenishment and rearrangement, you know. As you know that you receive the goods and you, you fulfill the customer orders, okay. As you said, you may not keep all the products in, a, in accessible locations, okay. So what you do, you put a reserve location, okay. So you may not, you put a reserve location, and the main other locations where you know is it accessible to location. When stock level falls certain level, we maintain certain levels for every bin locations, you know, minimum, maximum, and all. As soon as uh, it falls certain minimum low, minimum level, then system creates the warehouse task, replenishment task. Say that, okay, is not enough stock, and uh, you know you you fill the from reserve location to the. Uh, uh, main uh, uh, storage locations where we picking, uh, where we uh, like, you know, the, do the picking activities. And the kit to stock management, you know, uh, it depends, some company they do kit to stock, some company may not do that. It's a depends on industry, okay? Like so it's a kitting management, you know. Okay, as I just said, kitting, what we do is we get order, but we just to kit the go, kit, uh, kit the item, okay? Just, you know, you may not assemble, even you put a, for example, you 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 rec you get some request, uh, some assembly of the goods as in that you know. This assembly is the header level, you know, where and under the child products. Just you collect if you want to assemble one product, uh, okay. In terms of any bicycle, just example I'm giving quickly. And bicycle require a lot of parts, wheels, mount guards, you know, all the bell, all these things. You know? So is is assembly you know the through the production order we perform it that. Okay, kidding activities. Okay, organize the production order. Then you you plan for that. How many child parts required? Just you you collect, you pick it all the product. Just you pack it and keep it. That's called kidding. Okay, and we'll discuss more on that. You know, while moving on. And the resource, yeah, we will discuss what do you mean of resource. Okay, and we treat equipments also resource. Okay, and RF guns also resources. The human people also resource. Okay, man, men, missions, all these are part of the missions, resources. We'll discuss, okay, what do you mean of resources? I will explain, uh, I will go through more on uh, what kind of equipments we are going to use in the warehouse, okay, how it looks like. And also we will discuss about uh, 
uh, not only uh, other than resource, we'll discuss what kind of package material we use it, what kind of RF devices in the warehouse. So all these things will go through that. Okay. Also, we discuss cross docking. Cross docking means like you receive the goods and you deliver the goods. You may not store in the location. Okay. I will explain these activities in the in a, in a graphical way so that you will understand. Okay. And import, export, dangerous goods and compliance is also uh, uh, is part of it, but we are not covering here. Okay, we'll discuss RM devices definitely. And uh, other things you know, we may not discuss because it's just more on MFS. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Just quickly, one minute, I will go this one. As you know that this is a SAP legacy product portfolio. Now you know that, am I right? So when you want to connect our warehouse, what are the uh, other required? See, material management is required. Sales have we discussed. Everything, you know, it should work. Finance is the main, finance and controlling, okay? As we discussed, production, manufacturing industry, if it's the manufacturing, the production is also part, plant maintenance, and anything, any company is there, so people are there, so human resource involves. As we discuss quality, because there is a damage as we see, you know, when you receive, and, and also when you manufacture, so quality management play around. Okay, this is a SCP legacy portfolio. And this is the, uh, uh, we are working on a S4. And as I said, now S4, simple finance, it covers both um, finance and the FI and the controlling. And sourcing and procurement, now we, Earlier it is called the material management. Now it is called sourcing and procurement. Because why sourcing means? You source means you identify the suppliers. Okay. You, there is a sourcing management. You identify the like which is the best supplier for me to deliver products to our company. Okay. That's the sourcing. And procurement, you place an order. Okay? And the supply chain, EWM comes under the supply chain. Okay. Our EWM comes under the SAP supply chain. S4 manufacturing, earlier we used called a production, okay, uh, production planning, now we call it as a manufacturing, okay. Now, earlier we used to call sales and distribution, now in S4 we call it just simple sales, just sales, okay, the terminology. Okay, it's fine, you know, it's fine, I will go through that, okay. So, that this is uh, where we are working S4 environment. This deployment, am I right? So how you are going to uh, connect, whether, uh, uh, just I will give brief uh, in this one, but next class we'll discuss more on like, you know, how, what kind of landscape we are going to use in a, a real time world, okay? How they adopt, which one is the best, whether it is embedded system, whether embedded landscape, whether it is a decentralized landscape, okay? How we can connect our EWM system if it is embedded, how we can connect with the decentralized system, okay? What are the requisites, okay? Uh, what are the advantages or disadvantages? All we, we will go through more on that, okay? Today it's more on like, you know, give a more about warehouse and uh, terminologies and uh, what, how these things can be performed in EWM system, okay? That's our objective today, okay? But at the end of the day, uh, we are going to use, uh, uh, Okay, because we are doing is an embedded system. So it is a, a both all whatever we discussed here, everything finance and sourcing and supply chain manufacturing, all these uh, it sits in the single box. Okay, so that's where we, we are performing. And if the is a decentralized, it will be separate boxes. Anyway. That's we will discuss more on that. Okay, I don't want to confuse on that immediately now. Yeah, this one next class and focus on this one. Okay. Today I'm going to discuss about typical warehouse layout, like you know, where we cover all this. Uh, uh, we can uh, understand more on the uh, terminologies and processes over there. Okay. Can you guys, can anybody help me in the like, you know, annotations? Uh, Bupender, can you check this? Because I can't find any annotations here. Sir, you need to click on that view options. You'll get an annotate there. Okay. It's a typical warehouse, you know, uh, when uh, if, you, if you go any warehouse, you know, we can find like, you know, uh, these are the typical common warehouse slave designs. 
Okay. Any warehouse when while designing, they should plan whether it's a U-shaped design or whether it is I-shaped design or L-shaped design. Okay. Okay. These are the common warehouse layout, uh, layout designs. Okay. What is the U-shape? Okay. This is the most common organizational layout. Okay. That can be used in the uh, in a warehouse. Okay. See here. See. Any activity for look at. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP video. Here, okay. This is the inbound activity. It starts here. This it goes to this one is outbound activity. And uh, these are all like, you know, this is the inside warehouse, all these things. Okay. It starts with inbound, starts with outbound for every uh, typical you shape design. Okay. See, all these things we discuss about what do you mean of transportation in it, what do you mean of tri uh, trailer, what is the docking, okay, and staging, all these things. So any Anything like, you know, there is a in and out. Okay. This is a, a typical U-shaped uh, design. Uh, hello? Hello? Pardon? Yeah, Bhupendra here, sir. Have you want to write on some note on PDF? Yeah, there is no annotation here. That's what I'm surprising. In uh, one minute. In final what? annotation. Typically, it should be there in a Zoom. That's what I can see. Yes, sir. Uh, Zoom is there. Wait, sir. I'm just let you know. But that's easy because, you know, if I draw, it's too much on this one. Okay, so before that, okay. And also the I shape, and this one they use for high, high volumes where you, you accept and they deliver it. Uh, this is a uh, this is a lot of warehouse I come across is a high shape one, okay? Because uh, one side is inbound, other side is outbound, okay? See here you see, right? Both are same side, you know? U shape is a both are same side. Inbound you perform it, outbound is also perform. U shape uh, design warehouse. Whereas I say means like you know, inbound perform as um, uh, 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 means you can say that north and south kind of thing. Okay, inbound perform is south and is outbound is perform is, is north. And in between all this, you know, we keep everything is uh, goods and all. There is uh, some occasions you know people will go for even L shape design. Uh, like you know, this, these are all very important. You know uh, the. Uh, uh, warehouse efficiency is not just you know we we set up an EWM means we can improve the warehouse. It's not just only EWM itself, right? and uh, it all depends on how the layout of the warehouse is important. Okay, if their warehouse layout is not planned properly, and it's, it's a lot of it's a clumsy in the warehouse in the real time. You know you don't know that how difficult it is. Okay, the movements of um, material movements will be. If it is a very a large size warehouse, the material movement is very, very high. Okay. If it is a clumsy warehouse, you know, you cannot perform activities smoothly because you a lot of forklifts and every, every means it movements is there, human movements and equipment movement. So the warehouse design also very, very important. Okay. When you are trying to implement, you know, you should think that, okay, what kind of warehouse is the L shape, I shape, or U shape? Okay, so that's why each one having their own uh, their own uh, benefits for this. Okay, this is the you said they use the most most common warehouse, and I say you know where we want to use high volumes, and then you use for uh, the I shape and L shape where you want to manage the uh, larger storage needs, then you use for L shape. Okay, so any warehouse in in a real time you come across whether you or I or L shape. Okay. For everything, you know that uh, for, uh, for for everything, as I said, like, you know, you have a, a, so I'm not that familiar with it. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Naidu. Yeah. Hello. This U shape means uh, the inbound and outbound doors are using the same. I uh, mean, using the same door for both the process. That's what I said. Only inbound. Both, both. You know, in a in a single lane, all the doors mm -hmm. are there. Okay? That's where it is that. Okay. 
Yes, even everything like, you know, for example, if I treat this is the inbound uh, receiving activities and this is the outbound side. See, here is the inbound. We, when you choose this one, this, this area is inbound, this area is outbound. Now, oh, once you are showing, uh, looks like you mentioned some, but we, I cannot see in the screen. You are saying this area, uh, like I, I don't know, like uh, maybe your. Uh, I cannot see the screen properly. I can see the presentation. Yeah, we just see the slide, but uh, uh, by any chance, if you are marking or showing something that's not visible uh, to yeah. us. Yes. Now you see this one? Yes. Okay. We can see cursor, but not uh, seeing anything drawing, drawing or something. That's what I mean. I told him like I need annotations. Somewhere should be there. That's what. Uh -huh. Sir, can you go to the presentation mode and right click? You will get pointer options. You can use the pen. Teachers. This uh, for the items filter. Copy. Yeah, right click. Right click on the slide. Ah, you find pointer options. Yeah, options. A pen and the ink, like whichever you want. Yeah. Now you. Can. Yeah. So you are on mute. Sorry. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, inbound and outbound, and the same thing. This is inbound outbound. Similarly, you can if you treat it, this is the inbound, and then this one is the outbound. Okay, that's where we see. It. Next one, I will slide another one. Oh, why I asked this question? In if we go back to the slide. Previous slide. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Please. In you see, even though you draw, you in U shape, you put an arrow in two different direction, but the picture is showing all the vehicle is uh, facing in the same direction. So that's the reason I just asked. No, no. Like see, I see, you receive. Box. That's why this is the inbound. This is outbound. That's what you see. You receive here. That's what under your from the and back and side. Yes. Yeah, yeah. From the back side, inbound is happening, and outbound again from the back side, it's loading in the truck. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm. Okay. So erase, erase all in ink on the slide. Erase all ink on the slide. This is the where I will uh, more I will discuss on this one. So I will cover all these uh, uh, scenarios for you guys. Okay. See, I just said just now we have saw the uh, different U shape design. Right? This is the one U shape design. See, everything is in line with one. Okay. So both uh, for inbound and outbound, they they use for all the doors. They use every doors. Okay. They use both inbound and outbound also. This is the U shape design. Okay. If you go, uh, see this one, uh, this is also u shape design, more or less. And uh, see, this is also u shape design. Okay, both are in the same line. Okay. And uh, th this is a, like, you know, uh, is a, looks like is a, uh, not I said, is a L shape design. Okay. So this is the inbound and uh, this is the outbound. The u receipt and the u delivery. This one, another one. Okay. This is the another one. See, both are all the same location. So you save this one. Okay. This is the inbound. And this is the outbound. So, so uh, sorry to interrupt. Basically, I have a doubt here. So, in U shape design, we see that uh, all the trucks are facing uh, on the same side of the barrows. But uh, my doubt here is, uh, is it something like uh, there will be dedicated doors that uh, these docking stations are for inbound and these docking stations are for yes. outbound or it's common? 
these things like you know while uh, while implementing we will see that uh, okay how okay, okay. they wanted okay whether okay. they want to use all the doors for inbound and outbound activities and because if it's a high volume warehouse you receive a lot of you are receiving on a daily basis so you can't use them right for both doors okay how frequency we receive how frequency we deliver it and we see which doors we can use whether we can use all the doors for inbound outbound or only few doors we can use inbound under other doors we can outbound okay okay thank you i will start uh, various uh, operations uh, processes here so is is easy okay see as i said like it starts from the assume that you received you you have received the product how you receive the product by you know vehicle and all okay this is the in a, in a ewm terminology we call as a transportation unit okay this one to you and another terminology is in a in a warehouse terminology it's called as a trailer okay trailer okay this one what is the containing the transportation unit you know that typically it will be handling units what do you mean of handling units this is the combination of the packaging material okay plus products okay products so say it's a handling means the combination of the packaging and product like you know you can see the regular rectangular boxes all these things okay so in a tu you have all the pro all the handling units then once you receive the goods you connect with the docking 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 places okay this, this is the docking area where you uh, attach the vehicle to the door okay when you attach the do vehicle to the door is called a docking okay that's we treat as a inbound docking and outbound dock okay all uh, uh, these are the doors and once you receive the goods you start with the unloading activity okay then first activity is the unloading and then you place the staging that means you may not immediately move to the final storage location so you stage it sometime and sometime in as i said the product may goes to the quality area to check it or if uh, sometime the product will goes to the deconsolidation if it is a non homogeneous material or like if it is a very larger handling units so you cannot put in the storage location so you may send it to the deconsolidation to dismantle again repack it there sometime you may receive the goods but you need to put the some labels and some um, um, product labels some uh, any labels so in you know, some labeling activity then you will send it to the value added service center before going to put in the final storage location this is the storage location that means at the end of the day you will move from storage locations to uh, final storage area where is a whether it is a how you are going to store it whether it is a racking system where whether it is a mezzanine location whether it is a floor location okay how you are going to keep your product in the storage areas okay storage areas as we can always uh, divide depends on uh, your industry whether you want to put everything in a racking or whether whether you want to put a, a different mezzanine location mezzanine means is a, within the warehouse where you have a several uh, um, floors ground floor second floor third floor like that okay or whether you want to keep product in the floor locations okay sometime even uh, uh, if you don't have much racking system no, they use in the floor locations the bulk storage areas okay so this is the inbound uh, uh, thing it happens and outbound activities when is outbound activity you know that it starts from the uh, sales order then you plan outbound delivery you start with the picking and all okay where it starts picking from the main storage area okay you pick the products and uh, you do you send it to the packing area where you do maybe assume that you pick it a product and do some packing activity here okay certain packing activity then move to the staging area where you keep certain time or sometime you know you pack it you may not deliver the same day you may deliver next day or after one week depends on so you may keep in the racking area again then once once the uh, is a carrier is uh, planned you know all the, in the tm side if is the tm integration you know so once a carrier everything is planned then you floor loading that okay and then we moved from uh, temporary staging area to main stage st outbound staging area then you do loading okay then the the vehicle will leave to the our add add location this is the typical flow okay inbound or outbound see all these uh, within this uh, warehouse you know uh, anything internal operations so for example any movements you know in that matter 
okay for example uh, there are some region you know we you recepted but you know some region some issue happened so you cancel all the warehouse tasks warehouse task means is a like you know movement of the product from one location to other locations is called a warehouse task warehouse uh, activities okay, typically so all as i said if uh, internal activities means you do counting physical checking uh, physical activity means physical inventory and also like you know movements of the products within that there are occasions where you want to some reason you know maybe damage happened here okay so you want to move this product to this location okay through ad hoc basis we can move the product from one location to other location okay and by product based or by handling based okay we can move that internally within one 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 bin to other bin or one one location to other location okay that's also internal uh, process okay see this what is the shipping area they put again this is a packing area this looks like you know they packed and they put into some racking area temporarily because they are not delivering on the immediately okay then once you pack it you know temporarily keep here then you move to the uh, staging area then you do the loading and all now do the sequences of picking packing uh, loading or staging right staging then loading it is inbound what i will start with no, no outbound 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 okay outbound is the picking okay mm. when you pick it and pack it okay next is the staging stays it and then is the loading so uh, so both in inbound and outbound staging happens is it so one once once you even inbound as i said inbound is unloading it starts with unloading and is the staging okay then final put away whether here or whether okay here. it's because in the diagram it shows shipping area so i was just confused if it's shipping no, area no, or staging what, you need to divide this okay okay so you say them right this is a inbound and this goes out sorry it's not that good at this so a uh, good receipt uh, happen at unloading stage or final put away goods receipt that's right so depends on the business okay whether you want to when as soon as unload happens you want to goods receipt should happen same time yes sap that, that's a based on that okay is that but there are occasions the business requirement they want to goods receipt should happen at the final put away okay but then you need to see which options we have how we can do that okay because what happen is there are consequences when you because you cannot wait until put away and you know goods receipt means when you receipt you have to confirm it saying that you have received the goods then this information communicates back to the s4 system that is called you know uh, purchasing and then you say that you already received it then they will plan the invoice and all these things they will pay for the money to the supplier assume that if you stop the uh, like you know un wait until you know a final put away if it because it may not happen sometime you know is the same day or next day or sometime even 10 days even after one month because there are occasion i have seen say so that time you cannot stop pay, paying to the supplier so that's what the business how it adopts as soon as unload they the goods receipt happens but certainly after receiving then you can check it on how many number of line item you recepted how many whether you recepted right product or whether you have no damage all you check it then you have a provision to you can reverse the goods receipt okay before raising a invoice you have a provision to you can you can reverse the goods receipts okay. so uh, the delivery update updation happens only on good receipt right yes this is another typical warehouse where you know uh, we'll discuss more on ad management side like you know how um, uh, we see like you know this is a checkpoint okay we call as a checkpoint once a vehicle entering is a gate is a main checkpoint okay no matter so you can see here is the inbound and is outbound here the okay. vehicle vehicle check in so the vehicle enters here and it may not dock directly here okay directly this is the docking area okay hope you can see my line red line 
So once get the vehicle, see, they may not, what they do that, sometimes they drop at the trailers here. As I said, these are all rectangular white boxes, is called a trailer, okay, or transportation unit. In a EWM terminal, we call transportation unit. In a warehouse terminal, they call as a trailer, okay. So the vehicle comes here, they may not stay some time, you know, they will drop the trailer, then they leave also, okay. Some occasions, you know, they will uh, come directly. They stay here. This is called the um, add storage locations. Okay, so they they stay temporarily, and when uh, when door is available, okay. So imagine if it's very uh, small warehouse, then they can easily manage. They can see that how many vehicles here and all. Imagine if you see if you if it's a very very large warehouse or distribution center, if it's hundreds of vehicles arrive. So may not possible, right? Through the dock appointment scheduling, then you can plan it, which vehicle should come, dock it, and which vehicle should go. Through the dock appointment scheduling, they will plan everything, vehicle movements, and you know, uh, the docking also, okay? So once you uh, the vehicle comes here, then you comes you attach to the, uh, the vehicle attached to the docking area, that's called door. Then you perform uh, all unloading and staging and uh, other operations. Same thing. Uh, when you want to do outbound delivery, then the vehicle comes and uh, uh, dock it outbound area. Then you plan it loading. Then it goes this way. Okay. So what do you understand for just this this layout? Okay. You understand that ad management is outside of the warehouse. Okay. Anything if uh, this is the, if is a, this is the warehouse. Okay. This is the warehouse, and all these activities it starts from the checking point then capturing every movement of the vehicle when vehicle is entered when vehicle is a stays when vehicle is a, a stays within the ad and when is a docking when leaves and when uh, at the end of the day when is checkout point okay this is the checkout point and this is the checking point okay this is the outside of the warehouse okay everything ad management we treat Outside of the warehouse is called ad management. Where ad management, you try to capture the vehicle movements. When vehicle arrives, where the vehicle should be uh, staged, what designated location. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. If you go any, you know, if you go, uh, if you go for any big uh, uh, Costco or you know Tesco in anywhere. So you see a lot of the car parking areas. There is a checkpoint, there is a checkpoint. So you know that where you have to go and where you have to park vehicle, all the similar concept, you know, when you enter the vehicle, where vehicle should uh, dock it, okay? So there is a, a storage uh, a bins or we have, we all are designated locations. So we, we capture every moment, okay? From check-in point to the stage uh, within the ad storage location, from ad storage to docking, from the docking to the again, it may come, it may stay again back to the warehouse uh, and ad only. Then after that, it will leave from our uh, uh, ad premises. Okay, just you understand that ad management is the outside of the warehouse. That's the only uh, outcome from this one. Okay. This is another complex uh, a warehouse, you know, where you, we will capture as many warehouse process here and uh, and we will we'll see that, okay, how much we can, uh, knowledge you people can gain from here. As we discussed by looking, this one is a U-shaped design. That's what we, uh, we discuss. Okay. Again, as I said, it is both inbound, outbound. What I can do now, I will split into this one. Okay. This is the uh, inbound. Okay. Then the remaining is I will treat as this. Maybe remaining this outbound. Okay. Outbound. Okay. As I said, the inbound starts with the uh, docking first. Okay. When our vehicle arrives, this is the transportation in it. As we said, is a combi uh, TU contains HUs. See, this is the HUs rectangular box, all HUs. Okay. And the HU contains the packaging and the product. Okay. It starts with the unloading. Okay, through the door and then a staging area. As I said, this is the staging area. Okay, this is a staging area. Okay, then the vehicle will move. I mean, uh, once you stay, once you receive the goods, then you may move to the racking area here. 
or you may move it to here or you may move it into the here or you may move it to the here okay the simple inbound process you receive it stage it then move it but in a real time you know it may not happen you know once you receive and stage it move to the main location the product will undergo several uh, operations okay sometime it may go uh, deconsolidation as we as i said like you know if you receive non homogeneous material that means one heo is a rectangular box is having a product one and the product two okay each product may be 100 quantity or 50 or depends on the product two different product with a different but we cannot keep same product in the same uh, same location whether here or here or something so we have to deconsolidate that you know you, can, you have to re unpack and repack there so where we can do that we can use we can do in a deconsolidation work center okay that is called work center means uh, typically we call in a warehouse in the work center any location you know work center means the physical location okay for example as i said instead of going here what i can so i will introduce some uh, uh, another location as a work center packing work center here okay before uh, sending to the uh, here i am not sending here i will send it to the uh, packaging work center where we do unpacking and packing then finally i will move to here i will move to here or i will move to that's where we do that I just said like uh, okay, this is the uh, typical inbound. Next, uh, we'll see next same way. This is yeah. and outbounds. When you receive the order, as we said, this is the uh, I'm getting the inbound. This is the outbound. Okay. Outbound and inbound. And when you receive the order and then picking starts. See where it starts picking. If you look at here, this is it looks like you know more or less MFFs only. No material flow system. By looking this one, say there are me mechanical equipments are here, okay? And uh, sorry, this is MFS. There is a mechanical equipments are here. So nobody can be access here, looks like this one. This is the MFS. This is a general uh, racking area where we can move because we have aisle also here. There is a space between the racking. Between the racking, the space we call as the aisle, okay? So that, you know, all the forklifts, everything, it will move around. See here also forklift is there, and uh, here also there. So when you this uh, when talking about outbound process, you may pick the product uh, from here. Then from here means, as I said, you know there is no human uh, human resource can go here. So only mechanical equipments. Then through the mechanical equipments, you system will go identify the storage location. Then it picks that and it put on the conveyor. See this is a, through the conveyor you received it. Then finally, you receive here. Okay. Then you do all the packing work centers. In front of this one is okay, packing work centers. And then after packing, then you move to the, this is another area, is the outbound staging area. Outbound staging area. This is the outbound stage. This is a packing work center. In a real time packing, at least a 10 to 15 packing work centers is there. Okay. Remember, work center means is a physical location where you perform your packing activities and the labeling activities, okay? Printing the uh, content labels, uh, SIP labels, all the labels, everything, okay? Then there in a work center, you have a packing materials also. What kind of packing you have to use to pack the products. Once you pack it, like, you know, uh, like your boxes, then you move to the staging area. Then you load the uh, goods into transportation in it or trailer. Then rest of the tool, if you want to capture the ad management, then you see that when the vehicle should dock and once you load it, the vehicle move to the uh, add storage location, then move to the checkpoint. So we capture every moment, even vehicle movement until checkout, saying that, okay, the vehicle, when vehicle comes and when vehicle goes. The typical one. And as I said, internal process, for example, I want to move this product uh, from some, uh, some region, you know, uh, this product, I want to move from here to here by that is called a bin to bin movement okay i want to move uh, this product uh, from uh, here to maybe some uh, some process where you know directly it comes to the outbound area okay that's called uh, a cross docking area right? which we'll discuss cross docking means directly you receive the handling see you unload it and you keep in the staging area inbound staging area okay and uh, this is outbound staging area 
For example, I pick this HU, U receptor, and I directly it goes to the outbound staging area and it goes to the uh, loading, then you, you will send it. So that means this cross docking process where you are not going to store your product, you receive the product directly, it uh, drives to the outbound area. Okay, how do you know that uh, uh, the products are going okay in a different different how system knows that you know which product should go to which locations okay then you need to set up in a master data so every product you should set up master data and every products you should define there's a controls there is a put away controls there is a stock removal in uh, controls okay so i mean it's not an easy job i'm right like you know it's a layman term you know how do I know that which product should go to whether here or here or here or somewhere? So we maintain the product such a way that which product should go to which designated location. Okay, when you receive the product, so we have a put away strategies. Okay, put away strategies we have. Okay, so by adopting a put away strategies, put away control indicators for every product. So then you know that when you receive the product, where this product should go whether it is ghosting to the mezzanine location or whether it is going to the racking location or this location or this location or this location, okay? So every product in the warehouse, you have to set up a put away control indicators, okay? You have to place strategies. Similarly, when, uh, when you do picking activities, how do I know that where I supposed to pick the product, okay? Imagine if it's a large warehouse, you know, in a daily operation, nearly 1 million picks, you are going to do that. Picks, 1 million picks. Okay, 1 million packs. Then how do you know that? Where my product, I need to bring it. How do you know, where my product is, is identified. How do I know that? So all these things, you know, you need to manage with a, a stock removal strategies. Okay, stock removal strategies. Through the stock removal strategies, I place for every product stock removal strategies such a way that when I receive, I know system will uh, advise me like, you know, this product is uh, lying in a mezzanine, whether it is the main rack or some other locations. Okay. So, but how, how, which product should get it? Okay. Depends on the industry. If it's a manufacturing industry, then I will say that whichever I received earlier, then a system will propose for the, for me first. What happen if it's a retail industry? What happen if it's a, it's a food industry? Do you think food industry, when you receive it, system always should propose for us first goods receipt only. Otherwise, the, there is a timeline, right? Food and food products may not stay long. There is a um, expiry date. There is self self life for that. So, how my system will propose, you know, based on self life expiration date? Like, right? so there are something how you whether you wanted a propose a, a self life date or something like expiration date. So that, you know, we have a 10 days timeline, then um, you recepted a first product. The system should always propose first product, should not propose a, a other product because otherwise it will damage further. So there are certain strategies will be placed, okay? Using the stock removal strategies, system proposes which product should get and um, uh, what date and all these things, you know, we, we, we do in a stock, stock removal strategies. So, that's where we do the pure stock uh, strategies. Um, just a few more minutes I will cover, then I will stop for the questions and answer. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is another typical warehouse, you know, and this is another typical warehouse. And this, this is a just in you know, a layout, how it looks like. Now we know that uh, inbound doors, this is an inbound area, okay? And uh, so how do you know, like, you know, uh, uh, how do you capture this physical locations in an EWM site, okay? All we, every location, you know, we, every location of this one, rectangular boxes, if you look at, okay? We treat as a storage type. In a EWM terminology, storage type, okay? That means I have a doors, you know, for every door, I have a 10 doors. All 10 doors, I define as a storage type, okay? I define as a storage type so that I capture all the door physical locations. Then under that, I will define as a, okay, door one, 
door to door three. Each door one, door two, I created as the bins. Okay, that means all the doors I I represent as a one storage type. Each storage there is a role. How do I know that you know uh, storage type? Whether it is a door, whether it's a staging area, whether the deconsolidated work center or quality or so like you know main racking area, floor location. Through the store floor, through the storage type roles within that there is a roles. If it is a door door there is a role for that. If it is a work center there is a role for that. If it is a staging there is a role for that. That means that means what you do is every physical location you try to create a storage types. Okay, you try to create a storage type. That means I wanted to create a, a doors means first I define as a one storage type as a door. Then I define each door one, door one as a bin. That means storage type and storage bin. Okay, storage type followed by the storage bin. There is a follow section also, but section is not a mandatory in EWM system. If you require, yes, you can create a section. Okay, but there is no mandatory. Storage type followed by the storage bin. Okay. And for example, here the goods receipt area. This entire area, goods in a physical location, we map as a one storage type, okay? One storage type as a staging area. And this entire area you create as a storage bin. Whether you want to entire uh, entire staging area, one bin or several bins, or it's, it's, it depends on the business. See, for example, I can divide in front of each door, in front of the each door. This is the section one, section two, section three. And within that, I, I wanted different bins, okay? Then you can create a bin one, okay? Bin two, bin three, okay? Whether you wanted one single storage or you want multiple staging areas or again, each, each door, against each door, whether you want to create a different staging area, within the staging area, you want to create several sections or within the sections, you want several bins. It's all the business requirement. Okay, how many storage uh, staging areas they need, how many storage sections, whether section is required or bins directly. Let's say section is not a mandatory unless otherwise uh, business uh, uh, driven. Okay, but EWM is not a mandatory without section, it works. Okay, so every even deconsolidated work center. So, how do you know that uh, Dickens work center? As I said, there is a you have to create a storage type as a, a work center, then there is a role for that. Then you have to create a, this physical location as a storage bin. Okay. So similar work center. Same thing here also you have to create as a storage type as a work center. Then you can create as a quality center as a bin. And similarly, here is a VAS also work center. That means you have to define as a storage type as a VAS work center. And again, bin as a work center. And VAS work center. And a floor. So every physical location you define or you represent as a storage type and each storage type have a certain roles because it, based on that you can distinguish whether it is a staging, whether inbound, quality or work center or packaging work center or goods issue center, staging area or main storage areas, whether racking area or mezzanine locations. Okay, through, through the storage type, you can always capture the every physical location of the warehouse. That is a storage type. And a storage type followed by the storage bin. Storage bin is the lowest one. Okay. So it's not like bins means only we see at the sales or we see at the fixed bin. No, every, every physical location is a defined as storage type and storage bin. That is the spectrum line. Okay. Next Next one. Okay, this, this is like you know uh, uh, racking one. How it looks racking. Okay, first I will draw some more here. This I will try to use this one. No problem. See, this is a like you know. Just I I draw this one. You can see this one. My line when I draw this one. Okay. 
guys can you see that no sir It's fine. Anyway, if the annotation is very easy, I don't know some reason is one of the difficulties. It's alright. I think you need to expand the slide. Only one question. I do. How long uh, each day session will continue? Yeah, what is the duration? Uh, the first session, I'm right. Maybe yeah, we may do. We may complete very soon today. But yeah, certainly for next classes, one and a half to two hours, minimum two hours. Yeah. Two hours. Okay. Okay. Finish it in uh, later. We'll discuss. Okay. This is like a typical racking. How it looks like. So if you look at that, you know, rectangular box where we keep uh, uh, within that we we can say three handling units. All these things. Okay. Uh, just I will move it into the next level. And just I want to show some of the pictures so that you know that how it looks like. The, the warehouses. This we have seen this one. This is a, another complex warehouse. You know, uh, this is the MFS metal flow system. So you can see all the even uh, for everywhere we have even. Uh, no, we are not even, see the cursor moment. And we see resistance C slide twenty nine. Is that what you are saying? We are not seeing your cursor movements, sir. Uh, no, you see cursor, no. No, and we are still in slide twenty nine, I think. But you went to a different slide now. Now you see that. Yep. Yes. Yeah, this is the like you know complex uh, warehouse where we can see. Uh, uh, you can see this is only MFS. Okay, I can because that. This is the MFS okay. uh, warehouse, okay. and we can see always conveyors and everything complex. When we have a mezzanine, ground, first floor, okay. and also this is also like you know is a, looks like is a I shape design, not I shape is L shape I believe. Yeah. Picture is not very clarity, not that good clarity. Oh, this is another uh, typical layout where we can see racking, usual racking one. Okay. This is another one. Uh, this is another uh, typical layout, uh, warehouse layout. And uh, this is another one, uh, is a retail industry warehouse. We can see inbound and outbound, okay, all packing workstations, and also pick path, and the oil and everything. This is a typical uh, floor look for the retail in the warehouse layout. Yeah. And I will go to the uh, next one is the equipments. What kind of equipments we use in the warehouse? Okay, warehouse equipments. Can you see my equipments now here? Yes, yes. Yes. So, as you know, that warehouse, you know, what kind of equipments they use it. Okay. The typical uh, 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 warehouse they use, you know, forklift, hand pallet truck, or like, you know, semi electric pallet truck, or um, anything. Depends on, like, you know, uh, which product we have to um, put away or um, removal, stock removal. Okay. Which, which, instrument we are going to use whether we are going to use a pallet truck or uh, you know the electric stacker uh, you know stacker means generally stacker will use for the high racking where you want to put the product into storage location or where you want to retrieval the product in the storage locations okay uh, this call is a stacker electric stackers okay. generally help hand pallet means is a handling unit where you uh, where you just uh, pull the products, you know, pull the handling units by hand. Okay. So this is the typical uh, uh, warehouse equipments. Okay? Just remember that when I'm talking about stacker, you know that uh, it's a big stacker for put away stock removal. We use at the racking area. Whereas, you know, floor location, all uh, just moving one location to other location, we may use for pallet truck or um, the electric pallet truck, okay, or manual stacker. Some uh, maybe mezzanine location we use a manual stacker, or we may use even lift also. 
because if it's a very big warehouse, is a mezzanine locations where a ground, first floor, second floor, they use even lift also. Okay, lift is also resources. See, all these equipments is a mapped as a resource. Okay, just remember is a pallet truck, manual, handwell, a hand, and also electrical stackers. These are the typical equipment they use in that. And uh, this is a, a, another, uh, uh, this is a, it comes as a part of um, packaging. When you are trying to uh, uh, pick the products, right? So you should have a, a, some kind of pick HUs, okay? Uh, you know, for example, when you go for any, uh, uh, anywhere in uh, for buying something or like, you know, some uh, vegetables. Or... Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Some of the uh, groceries are, first you do some, uh, equipments you carry some uh, trailer or something right so you pick the product and all but in a real time warehouse similar way you when you get the order you know you you may not just go simply like that you take some uh, uh, tote or you may take some box or you may take some trailer where you pick the products from the bins to um, uh, putting into the box first you may not say directly take to the packing area first you pick all the products at the different locations you consolidate in Everything and you move to the packing work center. Okay. Uh, this also is a part of comes as a packing material only. I will see. It's comes in. This is another typical uh, equipment. Okay. Electrical and the table, all these things. You just you can have a look this way. Okay. This is uh, another uh, um, trailer. We can, we can call it as a trailer where you keep a lot of boxes here. So when a picker, you know, then typically take any trailer and he carries a lot of um, boxes, whether you can call it as a tools. So he, he takes this one, you roam around, you know, um, storage locations where you pick the products from the bins. This is the trailer or you can call it as a tools or boxes. Uh, this is the hand uh, stacker, that's what we discussed. And uh, this is the el electrical stacker. So this is the handling unit. This is the another um, uh, typical uh, handling units they use in the warehouse. But just moving by using hand, you move the HUs from one location to other locations. Okay. This is another equipment they use in the warehouse. Okay. Uh, cell trucks, you know, box carts. Okay, rolling ladders, you know, hand trucks, appliance trucks, you know, drum trucks. You know, you have even part of way we have a drums also. How we can carry that? So we have a drum trucks also. Okay, and hand pallet trucks we have discussed already. Utility carts. People will use majority whether it is a box carts or utility carts where you bring the products. Means way while picking, you know, you you may not go by empty hands. You take any either box carts, whether you take the cell trucks or utility carts, or stamp stands, or anything like, you know, some equipments you carry and you bring the products. Okay. This picture is may not be good clarity. You can see the uh, stacker is uh, carrying the uh, handling units. This another one. This another typical uh, equipment in the warehouse. So this is another one. Uh, um, a picker is a carrying trailer, and he, he, he keeps in the boxes because you know the boxes we treat as a tools. So you will pick and you will drop it. See, remember in a real time when you pick the product from the bin, bins also having some barcode. He will scan it. Then you will drop here and also we will attach barcode for an entire trailer or we may, we may put the barcode labels for the each boxes so that when you pick the product in the bin, then you should understand that where my product after picking, how I can capture the product. So every moment you will be captured even while transit also while, move, while moving the product, we capture that, you know, by... If you scan the product, then you know that where is my product, whether my product is carrying the trailer, whether my product in the parking area, my product is in the uh, bins or any locations. 
that's a typical level. These are the equipments. And then is the and the packing materials. At the end of the day, because you need to pack it, right? So this is the handling units and where we the racks. You can see every bin. You can see you can accommodate minimum is the uh, three HUs. Okay? Every look. This is the standard warehouses. Any complex warehouse, okay. Typically, they design this uh, racking will be designed such a way that you can accommodate three HUs, okay, three handling units. Okay, see if you look at that handling units, as I said, is a material with the product attached. That you can see there is a wooden products assigned for every location. Okay, if you look at every HU, every location of this one, you can see wooden location. Why they put a wood? Wooden, wooden pallets, you can call it the pallets, and they keep on the HUs. Okay, that means packing is material with the product. Why they keep? Because you need to, if at all, if I need to retrieve this product, whether I want to put away, I should in a position to easily, like, you know, put, I need, I need to put it, I need to take it out. Okay, through the forklift, you have seen them, right? Forklifts or stackers. Okay, through the stackers, you know, uh, high stackers where you, you do the put away and you retrieve the products. Okay, using the pallets, okay, you retrieve the product. So in a typical warehouse, if you keep the storing, then you keep the pallet. On the pallet, you keep the HUs. Okay, we will discuss how what kind of pallets we have. The typical pallets we have Euro pallets. We have a US pallet, chip pallets. Okay, P63 and so on. What is the difference between these terminologies? Each country, you know, European Union, they have separate uh, their own pallet design, and US having their own pallet design. And you say the names only is a different, but the size, the names are different and also sizes will be different. If the chip is the size will be different, Euro pallets is different, chip pallet is different. Okay, it's, a, it's a, at the end of the day, different sizes. And also uh, like, you know. Uh, it's not one doubt. Uh, even this pallet also can be part of the HU, right? Yes, yeah. all together we call it the HU. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Well, just know you, 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 are, you are explaining, you, you are saying uh, keep the HU on the pallet. That's the reason I just asked. That means in the HU means the packaging, right? Packaging with the product is the HU. Okay. This HU mm -hmm. you will keep on the pallet. Okay. All together we can call as a HU. Okay. okay. But you won't keep as a just a pallet uh, without a packaging material and product, you can't call mm -hmm. as a HU. This is a return package and we can generally be treated as a return packaging, the pallets, right? Both, you know, for put away time, you use it and for uh, uh, stock removal, both. Okay. Correct. Even when we can directly load with the pallet into the uh, reefer or the trailer as well, right? Yes, same time. Yeah, all the time. If you look at every HU here, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. the pallet here, wood, wooden pallet. Okay, I will, I will show that what yeah. kind of pallets we have next, okay? And as I said, like, you know, just I will bring one example quickly so that you understand that. I'm not sure that how good this scene is. And but, uh, hope uh, this pointer issue will be, annotation issue will be resolved uh, before, by, before tomorrow's yeah, class. Yeah, they should resolve, yeah. Because, yeah, because it's, it's a bit difficult to follow yeah. uh, your explanation. This annotation very easy for me to draw and explain here. So you can see that there is a for, for tracker here and uh, there is a wrapping product here. And under the wrapping product, you can see the wooden pallets here. Okay, Th These are the wooden pallets. Okay, Even racking also, you can see left and right, left side and right side where we have a racking. For every product, you can see that there is a wood pallet here. So any racking, you know, they will keep uh, first pallet, then they will put the product, okay, packaging material with the product. Okay. So that why they use because for the easy put away and the easy retrieval. Okay, what kind of pallet types we have in a real time world? Okay, so pallet types means like you know how your product will be handled using these st stackers. 
whether stacker can do two ways, whether a four ways. Okay. Sorry, guys, you know, I'm not doing annotations, not there, so I'm struggling actually a little bit. Okay. Just I will see whether if I use epic one, epic one, you are not, you can't see them, right? When I draw something. Sir, can you? Sir, on the on the pen itself, like you can adjust the width of the pointer just below below. Just I'm selecting one actually. You see whether I can do this. Sir, can you see that circle mark, the full mark? Ha. Huh. Now you can just reduce it. You can just draw it on the picture, sir. No, 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 no. You, you just select a. You just select. No, 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 no. Just come out. Ah, just select the line, line option, line. Ah, then draw it on the picture. Not there yet. She's not taking this one. Sir, you are in uh, erase actually. No, select line. The next uh, just below the text. Just select the line, sir. Just select okay. it. Ah, uh, just come. You need to select it, and uh, yeah, you have to draw. Your pointer will change to circle, the tiny circle one. I think uh, line no, it's not available. It's saying by now. If it clicks on that line, yeah, it's yeah. saying by now. It's okay. Anyway, we will cover even next session. You know, that the, by that time they will fix anyway. Any questions? Yeah, this is the palette types means like, you know, how your product will be carried, okay? Whether two ways or one way or something like that. And if you look at here, uh, you can see Euro palette. It's a, it's a typical palettes in the uh, in the real time world where you use it, okay? Whether two, just you need to understand whether two way entry or four way entry, okay? Is a two way entry means only you have to do all the time uh, one way only. You cannot do that. I mean, like in a forklift guy, he assume that sometime if you put in a, a rack, a rack location, you know, if you put a wrong location, he cannot put and he cannot retrieve also. So he cannot retrieve also, he may put. But uh, with a four way, it helps for him, like, you know, any direction we can do that. In even within a warehouse, it's the easy for him to, like, you know, move the product quickly uh, if it is a four way uh, pallets. Okay. That four way means the forklift can enter in a both, uh, forklift guy can put into the, uh, uh, there is a projection sum, right? For any forklift, they have a uh, three, four uh, um, projections they have. So you can use that projections, you know, we can lift the uh, HUs from one location to other locations. Okay. Typically, you know, four way is the best option. So it can, uh, you can, any, you can come any direction, you can pick the product. It's disconnected suddenly. Okay. And these things, like, you know, is, um, in a, in, a, in a typical warehouse, you know, they have all the equipments and they store it. So, you know, always when, whenever we get a, when a packing, then you need to attach with the wooden pallets and you will deliver it. Okay. These things, you know, you need to maintain as a master data. Okay. You have to create like several uh, pallets in a chip pallet, euro pallets. And also you need to define like, you know, which pallet uh, should go to the respective bins. Okay. You can't just like, you know, send my chip pallet into one bin. Unless that bin is allowed as a chip pallets, unless that bin is allowed US pallets, unless that bin is allowed Euro pallets, so and our P63 and so on. Okay, so you define that what bin bin storage types. Okay, whether that bin is allowed chip pallets, whether Euro pallets allowed. Okay, you can't accommodate a, um, Euro pallets into chip pallet location because the same dimensions are different. If it is smaller dimension, certainly you can allow. Okay, if it's a bigger dimension, you may not allow. So, so you understand that a pallet means looks like, okay. Under the pallet, you will keep a, our um, packaging materials. Okay, that's called handling units. And this is a typical just if you look at this in a bigger view. Okay, this is a four way. So, you know, where, where the stacker can pick this product in either direction, all the directions. Uh, this is a typical, uh, Pilots, you know, they will keep it as a as a storage. Okay. This is another typical pallets. 
this is what we have seen already. Okay, this is the inventory, you know. So they they'll keep. See, pallets is also part of packaging material. You know that, okay? There's also they have a lot of inventory. Okay, they will keep it because they need to perform all the after packing. They will attach the pallets, then they will deliver to the customer. Okay, they won't deliver simply handling unit. They will deliver along with the pallets also. Okay. This is another typical packaging material. You know that. Now you know the pallets, you know that what kind of packaging material require. This is all the it, it stores in the inventory only. Okay? They will keep some uh, some other different location so that you know they will utilize this uh, packaging material and pallets. And uh, this is the typical racking one. See how they keep in the racking and the handling units. Look at this one. By uh, by, by by looking this one, you know that. Uh, every bin we have, you know, uh, one wooden pallet under that we have a, a packaging material. Okay. The annotations is a good effort. It's fine. Sorry, guys. I don't know why. Sir, can you, sir, can you just click on that uh, drop down of A? There's a pen there. Notations, you know, is, uh, because I'm sure that, you know, because top sharing is there, but nothing is there, another way is there. Sir, no, sir, there is a, just below that, in that A, there is a down arrow, there's a drop down, you'll have to select a pen and then you can write. Let me see here, actually. No, 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 yeah, in, on the epic pen itself. Yeah, first just speak uh, is... down, down, ah, first one, first one, ah, now select that, write it. Yes. The color what you have selected is blue, like as you see below. Then I can change the color also. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It helps now. Because I don't have much experience on this using this epic one. It's okay. And we will another the equipment see, we use in the uh, uh, other one is RF devices. Okay. You know, this is a barcode reader. We use a barcode reader because, you know, in a real time in a warehouse, you know, people may not uh, uh, look that, you know, you have to scan it, the barcode. You have to just scan the HUs so that, you know, uh, it reads. It's a readable format. Uh, this is the typical barcodes for reading the HUs. Okay. And uh, we use a uh, uh, majority is the RF devices, radio frequency devices. We use all, in a warehouse. We perform uh, all the activities using RF guns only. So we never use uh, anything. Okay, now. Pen. So just select the pen. That's enough. Yeah. Ah, now write it. In a three ways, we can do one is the UI using a GUI. You can see now my writing, yes, sir. Okay, through the graphical user interface, where is the SAP? We perform all the activities, okay? Like you know, you can create a warehouse task, you can release the warehouse task, you know, all you can move all the uh, warehouse tasks, you know, using GUI. You can also do all the warehouse activities using okay, free applications. You know, that free is another. Uh, uh, most popular applications, Firi. And this uh, typically used for all the business users. Business user means the warehouse operators or uh, clerks or uh, supervisors and so on. They use all the Firi application. They may not use a graphical user interface. Okay. And the third one is the uh, radio frequency devices, RF devices. Okay. Radio frequency devices. Who is this going to use? All the warehouse operators will use for the RF device. What they do in our using RF devices, all they do unloading activities if they want to do, they have to scan at the door, they do the unloading. If they want to move the product from staging area to the main storage, they scan the product using RF gun, system drives where it should go, okay, through the RF devices, okay. Otherwise, you can use the free applications, but system-wise you do, but physically somebody should move it, okay. Even graphical user, you can use it, all the operations, unloading, 
uh, staging put away or all these things, but somebody should physically should move him, right? So in a real time, we may not use much uh, GUI, uh, but only implement, only uh, consultant will use much on a GUI. And the theory applications, most of the time we use warehouse supervisors. And because the warehouse supervisor wanted to see that how many warehouse tasks that they performed on the day, how much goods received they have done it, how much uh, packing they have done it, how much uh, PGA they have done, means post goods issue they have done it, how much stock is there. So all these, you know, monitor, using a monitor, okay, we have a, a powerful monitor is the SAP monitor in the AWM system, monitor, where we can see all these uh, in a single uh, uh, central database where we can we can capture all the inbound activities, okay, inbound uh, requests and outbound requests, outbound activities, okay. Using graphical interface or free application we can use. But you cannot use, uh, you cannot check all the stock and everything in the RF device. Only RF device, you can perform the various activities, okay, moving the product from one location to other location. We can use RF device, you can use even packing activities also. Okay, uh, like you know, in a work center, they do all the packing. Then, once packing, they can scan the labels and they can print the labels through the RF UI. Okay, this is the difference between the graphical user interface and the free applications and RF devices. We will go to give graphical user for SAP next tomorrow. You know, we'll discuss more on SAP because I don't want to discuss more SAP directly. So, without knowing all these things, equipments, terminology, you know, if you could directly enter into SAP, it will bounce back for you. Naidu sir, I think you can check stock uh, via RF gun, right? We may not use much, you know, for stock because we know we, we never use. Yeah, yeah, we do. For it's physical a... inventory, we for we use for physical inventory. We can do. Okay. Yeah, we can do stock check and stock movements. We can do uh, goods uh, receive. We can goods issue. We can okay. do everything from via RF. No, we can issue and all. See, goods receive happen as soon as unloading happen, right? Yeah, that's right. But uh, we can storage level, we can storage level, we can check stock, we can find the storage bins and stock. We can check stock, we yeah, can yeah, make we'll it. See, but we we'll, we'll never use it in, in our Yeah, we can do bin to bin movement from via RFA as well. I can do movements, I can do, but I can't check the stock levels, all these things. How much okay. product is there? You can't check in a using RFA as per my experience. Because we can do all the movements, all the inventory. Yeah, yeah. Inventory. We can go, we can, yeah, we, create we, can a outbound, we can do, yes. But uh, yeah. as of, I know, but because uh, I, we can, we can check stock as our RF guns. Yeah. EWM, we can see that. Like, I will show that, you know. Yeah. It's a very good image. You can see that. Okay. So, as I said, like, you know, it's everything here, it appear here. So, Whatever we have GUI screens, you know, in a GUI, we use RF, uh, RF transaction. There is a transaction in a, a SAP. Whatever the transaction we, we see, everything we it displayed, it will be connected through the RF device. Okay. Yeah. Without RF device, you can perform all these activities in a GUI. Like, you know, how RF device, how uh, operator can perform it. Same thing, it will reflect back into the device when you connect that. Okay, this is the basis for uh, responsibility. They will connect our SAP to the device. Okay, through the web, web based application, how they connect is okay. We may not discuss, but just we will give on the, uh, some light on that. This is pretty much for forklift drivers and picking and packing people they can yeah, use, yeah. like even this is not forklift, but is a is a is a yeah, forklift drivers they can, they can do for put away and the stock removal, you know. Yeah. So all these in activities, you know, they can see that inbound activities, outbound activities. Yeah. And also Pretty much we, SAP yeah. system on RF scanner. Also, we, we monitor, like, you know, we can uh, control it, like, you know, I have a certain resource where he can perform only inbound activities. Then I can give only privileges, access only inbound activities. I can give only, if it's the operator only outbound, then I can control that, you know. Or I can control the access, saying that, okay, you can perform outbound activities or some person only physical inventory, then I can go only physical inventory access. So all these things you know, I can control. When a resource will log in into the RF device, then you can see what are the access for him. Okay, what are the activities he can perform? Depends on hierarchy, yes. Yeah. 
but we can give some time for all axes. So he may yeah, do inbound yeah. activities, he may do outbound. Like, he may warehouse do supervisor, even... he might need all the access anyway. Not all places also. And just I will uh, give up one uh, video before um, closing this one. So typical some of the videos I have so that you know you can understand better. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. I know it's a boring for you more on that, but at least some extent, if you understand all these things, is is a good because while while doing you know the SAP you know all this configuration you know you should uh, will be better position. Okay. Let me run through some video. Yes, Hope you can hear my sound as well. No yes, mind. we can. Yes. Yeah, we can. You first need to talk about your warehouse layout. So you have your shelving. Maybe you have an inbound dock and an outbound dock, a receiving station, a packaging station, and a workstation where you can manufacture items, make bundles, or whatever else. The first step is creating zones. Creating zones or areas helps organize your warehouse and increase picking efficiency. There are two clear zones in this model. We have the A zone and the B zone. Next, we define rows. Rows are intuitive because they follow the flow of your picking patterns. These are your locations. Let's take a closer look at row A02. In this example, we define locations based on bay or column and row. So there are nine locations. This location is zone A, aisle or row A02, bay 102, row B. But within each location, you can have sublocations. So within this location, you have sublocation 1, 2, 3, and so on all the way to 25. Whether a location or a sublocation, this is where you put your bins. We tend to think of bins as a physical box, but it makes more sense to think of bins as the empty space inside of the box. That is how the system views it. You fill the empty space with products. Then you give the bin a number or a tag. The system then stores all of that information. That's the SKU, the quantity, the expiration date, the lot number, the unit of measure, and the product volume. With that in mind, this bin location is zone A, aisle A02, bay 102, row A, number 19. That is the full location name. When an order comes in, this is where your picker goes. Within this location, you have a physical bin where you store your products. There are two other kinds of bins. First, you have virtual bins. Virtual bins are for products, like books, that are already barcoded. The system counts each group of barcodes as a bin, but in reality, the books can be loose. This means that you can still track them without needing to actually put them in a box. Finally, you have movable bins. These bins are not fixed to a specific location, but instead are tied to a product. Here's how they work. Let's say you have a pallet come into your warehouse. You look inside and see that it is a large shipment of teddy bears. To turn this pallet into a movable bin, you scan the pallet into the system, print out a bin tag, and stick it to the pallet. Notice that the bin tag is just a number instead of a series of letters and numbers. This is because your movable bin is not tied to a specific location. So you've tagged your bin, and now you can put it away. All you need to do is scan the bin tag and the location, and now the system knows where your pallet of teddies is. Now, maybe you sell security equipment, and so you want to turn these bears into secret cameras. So you go pick up the pallet and take it to your workstation. Grab the pallet, scan the tag, scan the new location, and you're all set. Once you've worked on these bears, you can take them back to the same location, or you can move them somewhere else. It's the same process either way. Just scan, scan, and put away. When orders come in, the system always knows where to send your team. To further explain, I want to give you an analogy. Imagine the city you live in, or the city you grew up in, this is a typical in some warehouse locations. Also, so some uh, either smart warehouse, you know, the, this is a DHL warehouse, smart warehouse.
At DHL, we have a very methodical approach towards innovation. We have very strict face gates and only scale globally if we are confident that it will bring outcome for us or our customers. We take innovation very serious. We always have in our mind how we can better serve our customers, how we can have better quality, how we can have better safety, and how we can operate everything that we do in a better way. We publish a trend radar. We look at social, at business, or at technology trends in a very frequent manner. So we try things out in a local environment and prove it there. And then we move to the next phase, where we scale this up to proof of concepts in a regional environment. And once we have proven that part, we would scale globally. We move things, so things have always been important for us. The Internet of Things is not a new term for us. It's been something we have been connecting devices to our networks for a long, long time. The data we are actually looking at is something that the IT systems had it there for, for many months or even years. I think that the IoT platform, what brings is give us access to the data in a very fast manner, real time. We have a unique position. We have a great breadth of operations across the globe. We are the biggest player on the market and we have had really good success in driving those innovations across the globe. Thanks to our executive relationship with Cisco, they basically brought a product that today can definitely cover that indoor positioning with the infrastructure we already have set up. What is important also is that you have a visualization tool that helps you understand that information and put the information into context. This is why actually we needed an extra partner and in this case Conduce was brought into the mix. So the three parties, Cisco, DHL and Conduce, actually put the system together. Basically, you're using uh, four sources of information. The first one is around indoor positioning. We are able to capture the Wi-Fi location of our scanners. We are also capturing the utilization of our material handling equipment. We also are capturing data around uh, the warehouse management systems, what are the tasks that are actually directed to our users. All those sources together basically bring us the visualization in the warehouse. As we started the project, we actually looked mainly at two aspects of them. One was around increasing efficiency in our warehouses. We want to see if we can actually run them better. And the second one was around safety. As we basically move forward, we want this actual tool to give us some insights in terms of making decisions. Aggregating the positioning of the individuals, we can actually get very interesting insights, such as, for example, heat maps. The heat maps will, of course, give us where are the highest concentrations of individuals and also with the four leads. And as a result of that, we could also bring some proactive safety measures. For us, what is important is to ensure whether the new technology actually is going to bring a benefit or not. We do have a series of lighthouses, one of them being Beringay. A lighthouse facility is a selected site where we show our best practices in operations and use it also for pilots in new process setups. The Internet of Things gives us a better view into our warehouse. We can replay activities over a period of time and analyze what happened and try to find alternatives. For the size of this operation, 40,000 square meters, it's impossible for a supervisor or an operations manager to have a full overview. Our first use case was asset utilization, material handling equipment, where we can analyze the usage over a day, a week or a month time. The inventory optimization identifies opportunity to put the right parts at the right spot of the warehouse to minimize travel distances. For safety, there are two ways to use the tool. We use it to review the traffic plan, so you can see the heat maps and determine if the flows are okay. And we use it to review incidents, so impacts or collisions, because the tool will really show you what happened. With the tool, you... This is another uh, data warehouse. I will show the last one okay, before closing. There is a ERS, okay, automatic storage and the retrieval uh, warehouse technology where completely the equipments, there's no man intervention. So this is a one more. I will show this last one video. So you can understand the difference between the <coughs> smart... Companies of all sizes use BigQuery to uncover new insights from their data, like cost savings. A lot of companies, they are moving, you know, uh, to, into MFS automation. Okay, even for picking, they use some equipments or even for uh, packing also equipments. So, because they're trying to reduce the operators, you know, warehouse operators. So everything by equipments only, okay.
for put away or stock removal i'm telling you know even as you know that even in operation now robots is coming to play so similarly or uh, even near future you know they will replace by humans for all various activities so that's why you know technology is going See, this, this are some of the uh, warehouse uh, videos I said because you feel it now. You know uh, what is the difference between the smart warehouse? Uh, what is the difference between the RSS, the MFS? Where you implement using MFS, you implement you know all the uh, equipment, resource, and everything through the MFS. There is a PLCs and all, but we are not discussing on this one. This is very uh, complex to set up here. So that's right. It's a lot of scope in the EWM, EWM wise. I mean, see even uh, so growth wise for long term. If you if people are looking for a career in the EWM, so a lot of opportunities there. As you know, the WM is a sunset very soon. So as I said, thirty thousand warehouses are there with the SAP. So how I don't know how many is they completed EWM, but you can say even not even twenty percent they're completed. So imagine. Uh, 30,000 if you remain 80 percent so everybody should move into one day the EWM system so a lot of opportunities not only EWM even transport TM also that is the TM is also most emerging field in the SAP now 
Okay, they are the one of the second leader, but they are going to, they are trying to reach a top level in the market. So EWM with the TM is a deadly combination. Okay, if you are looking for a long term, at least 10 to 15 years, at least 20 years, I can say. Okay, a lot of future on EWM. Now I will stop today because you know we already covered a lot of things. Tomorrow we will discuss more on that. This is the complete SCM. As I said, SAP is a part of supply chain, end-to-end -end flow. You know that it starts from receiving, and so you classify the materials like you know you try to keep it, and how to control the data, how to pick the data, then how to move into packing areas, then how to dispatch it. Okay. This is the like you know complete flow. Okay, starts with that. And as you know that you know whether you are going to use ferry applications in in your warehouse or is a smart devices or RF devices. Smart devices means even even mobiles are going to use it. Okay? Smart devices is a little bit heavy to carry. People are going to move into the smart devices like you know for phones and all like that. Even phones having all the uh, like acts, I mean, uh, like provision to scan the RF codes and bow code, everything. Okay. So that's why this technology is growing and uh, people are also looking at different options, not be the remain same for, for, for all the time. And what we can do tomorrow is uh, I'll stop now because uh, uh, my intention is, you know, I don't want to directly jump into SAP. Okay. No matter how you feel today, but I wanted to come some brief uh, terminologies. I know some at least some extent you learned today. You know that what is warehouse. You know that what are activities we do in the warehouse. You know that what kind of equipments. You know that uh, RF guns. You know that you know forklift. You know the packing material. See, if I jump directly a SAP screen, imagine if I talk something you don't know that. I don't want you to imagine something else. Instead, you see that. You see the things. Gents understand that. Okay, then only you can learn SAP. Otherwise, you know, just, you know, talking and going to the changing the screens, configuration it won't help us. Okay. Further going, we always discuss the business case. We always see the real-time scenarios. Then we will move to the one-by-step, how to set up in a EWM system. Okay. How to capture the moments. Okay. First, we understand the business case. Then we will go in SAP. We'll see what master data is required and how to configure, how to interface it whether sourcing and procurement to AWM system, how to interface to the sales and all. Okay, how we can understand how the data flows from SAP, S4 system to AWM system or ERP to this one. So I have plenty of slides, you know, I will explain. As I said, it's not a word, everything in a pictorial representation. So you should feel it, you should remember, you know, so that you, know, you can learn S AWM system, AWM processors or SAP AWM, okay. Uh, that is uh, uh, my my way of uh, you know training. Okay, and sorry, somebody is. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Okay. Knight, is it possible to share the PPT? Uh, I know I it will be available yeah. in the uh, it will be available share, in you know. the uh, videos, but PPT will always share some other things. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't segregate because this is we prepared last time. You know, we can say almost two hundred and pages. So no, I'll that is fine. Right. Please, yeah. I can that split it. I'll try to split and say it here. Okay. Yeah, okay I'll okay. split and say it here. Yeah. Because that's what I don't want to jump directly. Okay. I know it's some uh, some people will already experience for them is okay. But I'm uh, I'm uh, targeting every individuals because even they don't know about warehouse. That's what uh, so now they know about what do you what what do you mean of warehouse, what operations they do that, what it contains inside. Okay. Some uh, yeah, now you know some extent. So now we tomorrow, if I talk about uh, all the organized structure, everything, now you are in a, at least some uh, better position. When I talk packing material, you know that. When I talk about handling, you know that. When I talk about storage type, you know that. When I talk about bin, you know that. Okay. So when I talk inbound, you know that what is inbound is we are going to do that. When I talk outbound, you know that. Okay. And you know the, what do you mean of staging areas? You know what do you mean of docking areas? You know storage uh, areas, you know racking area, you know mezzanine locations. Okay, so th that's the intention of this. You know, first class, you know, may not be in purely SAP EWM, but overall business process, overall uh,
different warehouse layouts and you know equipments we use in the warehouse okay and tomorrow session we will start um, and uh, more on like you know uh, deployments you know more on like you know are creating organized structure <clears throat> what kind of organized structure we need where you want to uh, establish a wm system in a w process so what kind of material master data we need uh, what kind of customer data we need or how to interface with the sourcing and procurement ewm so all these things you know, slowly we will build one by one okay first tomorrow class we will discuss more on organized structure okay what kind of organized structure is required to build our warehouse okay and also uh, tomorrow we will discuss more on like you know i'm going to uh, design i designed already warehouse but i will uh, explain how how you are going to assume that you are planning to implement a warehouse where you are going to start okay how you are going to start how you talk with the uh, business users okay business users means imagine i have a uh, implementation partner i have a company where we are going to implement the sap okay how you are going to approach for that okay what information we collect from the business users okay so because we are the consultants we talk with the business users okay there is an implementation company there is a uh, company they need implement okay some ex company okay how consultants will interact with each other to get the appropriate data and uh, to populate it how we train them how how they will benefit uh, from our training okay so how everything how we prepare what kind of documents we prepare all these things we will will discuss tomorrow session okay and also we will design our our warehouse assume that we will start from the scratch and uh, so assume that you are starting a new project uh, okay where you start from that project okay how many racks we need how many doors we need how, what kind of uh, whether dikanasal work center we need whether vas work center we need okay how many uh, racks we need whether we need a quality work center whether a scrapping area we need where a return process we need we are going to do that okay when anything uh, when it's some receive a product but you, some region you know it is not going to the main location system is driving different so we call as red zone so like that you know how many outbound side how many outbound doors we need how many staging areas we need how many packing work centers we need whether we need a vas work center here uh, okay whether we have a shipping office whether is inspection office we need okay uh, and also add add how many ads we need for inbound side whether we need 3 4 5 inbound uh, add bins or outbound side how many we need okay so all these things you know we discuss it okay? we'll go stage by stage so that you know you will uh, grab all the terminologies and you know all the processes and everything okay this is what i'm going to do tomorrow uh, we will design we will design we will uh, understand this layout and uh, based on this layout we are going to... don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap video and try training will go this one only all our training every day we will discuss about this warehouse first we discuss the one business case then we'll go to the sap and we configure all the things so like that for every process we'll discuss first as a business case in a real time business case and we assume that i'm one of your business uh, business person is uh, is giving you like the requirements then how to collect as a consultant requirement how to convert the requirements into uh, uh, in a real time sap system okay what are the benefits of the, that how we are going to test it in a system integration whether unit test system integration okay um so are also user accepted tests there are three tests we will discuss more on that user unit test means what is unit test system integration means what is system what is the user accepted at the end of the day whatever you implement what however you do good but user should be accepted that mean business user should be accepted okay the ex company people should accept that okay One, until they accept it we need to train them we need to educate them we need to prepare the documents we need to explain step by step process so that they should in a position to do the operations like okay once we implement that so this is a typical so, uh, we will receive an uh, recording of the sessions right or where it will be stored uh, yes yeah, yeah. sastra geek will send all the oh. recording videos 
and uh, they will also streamline everything you know and uh, even we have excel spreadsheet you know this thing, where we are going to sorry one second, one second. okay i'm setting my excel spreadsheet this is the last time sessions we have undergone okay we we last time we did for both as a um, combination of the basic and advanced now we we, we split into mastery and excellence if people have registered both, we cover both the basic and also advanced. And okay, this is the where topics we covered last time. So exact, we do the, all the topics. Okay? We cover all the topics. And also we are adding some more we integrations. We see how extent we can do that. But definitely we go through real-time scenarios here, integration. So you will be in better position while implementation time. Okay? So these are topics we covered. So that's what I'm also going like uh, one by one. So today we covered is the like, you know, warehouse layout. You know, the warehouse layouts now, typical layouts, you know, the terminology, you know, some basics now, the uh, uh, warehouse. So we'll start more on like, you know, tomorrow, SAP screens, where we will go through all the screens, how it looks like. And then we will start with the organized structure. Then we'll go next uh, EWM organized structure. So say one by one, we build the uh, steps, okay? so that you will know what you have done previous day, what you are going to do today. We'll Mr. Nath, can you share the sheet if possible today? I think uh, you will share, I think so. You ask uh, Sastra whether uh, Aman or uh, Bupin, the, they will share the things, but I don't know whether they can share it, but they might have shared a uh, syllabus, but whatever syllabus, you know, I'm covering here. So, you know, if you go say syllabus, I can't jump it here and there. If I go my flow, will be covered all the topics which I've mentioned in the uh, syllabus, okay? This is a streamlined way we have done it so that there is a connectivity between the topic to topic, so that, but whereas uh, it is in the syllabus, it's scattered, right? Some topic you do, some topic will be, but this one is the connect, interconnected one topic to other topic. Okay. Just check with the Sastra you guys, okay? For all providing system, material, everything is a, is a their job. But you just you talk to them, you can get it from them. Okay. This is sir, no idea, sir. Each class would be two hours, right? Maximum two hours. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I'm. please, because uh, by the time we finish at two two thirty over here, we have to go to work the next morning. Yeah, no, no. Actually, what we are thinking, you know, initially we thought. Saturday class one and a half hour session, and yeah. Sunday is a two and a half hours because you know a lot of a couple of yes guys are there. Assume that if yes people are there, for Saturday them would the be is great because if you do Sunday two three hours is very hard for us. Like you know we have to wake up in the then morning. We can split. Yeah, we can change it. See, see the first time we have we have done it, right? So yeah. based on your feedback, we can always adjust the certain timings. So maybe one hour late, one hour early, or we yeah. can plan. It. Yeah, please. If we... Saturday would be no issues and only Sunday because Sunday I'm from Australia because uh, here Sunday I had to wake up at two o'clock in the morning to attend your class. By the time your class is going to be finished at four o'clock, I had to wake up again in the six, six in the morning, start working again. Any questions you want to ask? Anybody, any questions in the chat is there? Yeah. Hello. I just will go to the chat. Yeah. The chat, anything is there? Are you sharing the presentation slides? Yeah, I will try to share Subramanya. Yeah, uh, but that's why I need to split it. Uh, somebody asked Tan Bukhari, I think, so why we need to unpack and re moving to bin. As I said, am I right? If I don't know whether you are here, but See, as I said, you know, majority we may not receive uh, all homogeneous materials. Sometimes non-homogeneous. I mean, two different products in the uh, one handling units. So that time, you need to we can't put a, a, a non-homogeneous material one location. Okay, we do unpacking. There are occasions where you see very big handling units. That handling units may not fit into either in a bin. Bin is also designed. Right? There is a length and weight and the height. You cannot fit. There is a design maximum hundred cases, one ton. But if it's a handling is more than one ton, then what do you do that? So we need to unpack and repack put into the warehouse. 
along this concession. Yeah, this. You mean consolidation, deconsolidation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And also, somebody's a visa is the cross docking and uh, uh, direct transfer. Cross docking, as I said, right? You receive the goods and you may not store in the location. Once you unload it in the inbound staging area, direct to goes to outbound staging area. Then from there you deliver it. Okay? How do how do you know the system where which product is a cross docking? So we need we need to maintain certain master master data, such a way that when when, when as soon as unloading happens, system will directly divert that product that the handling unit to the outbound staging area. Okay. So there is a master data is involves where we need to set up such a way that which product is undergoing cross docking, which product uh, when you receive the good system will know that which product will be is it a simple inbound is a cross docking product or uh, okay whether a deconsolidation product all system will derive. Well, you said something homogeneous. What is that word called? Homogeneous means is the same material. Okay. Okay. Same. Assume material. that I have same material. If it's a non-homogeneous means a different product is a packed into one single handling unit. When you receive it, you need to dismantle, you need to unpack it and repack because you may not allow the non-homogeneous homogeneous, non -homogeneous material to one bin. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, need to send right. it to different. Yeah, you have to separate and put separate yeah, separate. pallets and put it in the license, different license plate and move into uh, well, the state. Is some of the, yeah. Sorry, please. Bupendra said some of the mastery details. Okay, we go through guys. Can you share the curriculum PDF under that? Say, yeah, Bupendra is going to say it. Yeah. What time tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah, is all the answer in the same room. And please say this. So regarding sorting, if bin has been damaged before sorting, we need to delete the bin. Delete the bin can be same nomenclature next time. Yeah. See. If is a bin is damaged, the physical damage happened. Right? System wise, nothing happened. So we can we can repair that bin and we can put it. Okay, or we can block that bin temporarily. Okay, we may not uh, akash, right? We're asking right? in the real time. Yes, there are also several times bin will be damaged. That bin, you know, we can block it temp until fix it, or you can permanently. We can if you want to, you know, system uh, if various things no longer require the damaged bin. Then we can delete that bin. Yeah, it's not that problem. For example, you want to again, you deleted, you want to create. Yes, you can create next time. That's not a problem. With the with the same nomenclature, right? Yeah, you can create. Yeah, you can create a single bin. You can usually single bin. You can create it. So typically, we upload them right as a bin because in a warehouse, complex warehouse, it may require. Uh, 100,000 bins or 1,000 bins, 10,000, 70,000. It's all like it varies for that. So you may not going to create a manually. Okay. I will I will explain how to create manually and also we'll see how to upload the like some mouse bins. Okay. Some 10,000, 50,000. So this is not our job. We will give the templates to the warehouse team. They will populate the data. They will give it to us and the master data team, you know, they will upload it. Okay. On yeah. behalf of us. End user does all this. Yeah, yeah. So that's what. Don't jump it, guys, straight away, you know. But we will explain all the things, all the process, all the stages, you know. I know that our people will expect very th means that first day, first thing, you know, may not happen, you know. So over the period of time, we will come to know all this thing. I will share all the knowledge, whatever we learned it, best practices. So uh, actually, this question asked by interviewer. So I ask. This is Akash. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See. Once the moment is a bin damage, first step, what we have to do is we have to block the bin such a way that we should not put away, you should not do the stock removal. That is the That's first step. Safety. To block it, okay? I will, I will give us some, uh, uh, that's why during our training, I will explain it such a way that you can answer any questions in the interview, okay? As I said, you know, this is not a, it's a conventional uh, training, guys. This is a um, real time, you know, I'm trying to bring as much uh, real time uh, uh, possible. You assume that you are implementing, you are doing some uh, EWM project on this one. Okay, not just you are learning. You are doing an EWM project. And I'm I'm developed one warehouse, so you are performing all these uh, um, implementation activities here. Okay, and uh, as I said, we are covering griefs also. Grief means like you know what happened if is a uh, inbound you recepted. Uh, and surprises you have seen. Okay, you may you receive over quantity, you may receive under quantity, under delivered quantity, or you may receive damaged quantity, 
or so like that there are in a lot of uh, uh, um, surprises we see in real time there's been capacity the, as well right yeah, yeah. Uh, all the griefs we cover and also outbound side we cover a lot of surprises in outbound also not only happy process even not happy process like you know what happen if is a, you pick a wrong product you, you do not have a stock in the warehouse how you are going to manage it how you are going to use exception codes there okay and so that's very outbound what happen if you deliver it there are occasions you picked and packed and suddenly customer said we don't want that how you are going to perform reverse that how you are going to put it back to the stock how you are going to cancellation that the process okay that is outbound grief okay and how you are going to correct the stock okay by creating physical inventory okay how you are going to move the product out of base one location to other location so we that's why in all real time scenarios we cover it okay because first class i don't want to jump into sap this because a lot of people bore and also they will lose enthusiasm or oh, this is the like yeah. so instead in if you explain the warehouse layouts and warehouse uh, terminology some of the videos you, know, you will get to know better idea on that now i'm sure you got now what do you mean of warehouse now so next i can go all the yes, awm side okay if no questions i will stop guys okay. sir one question can you please clear the concept of uh, handling unit issue or a, some images if you can share yeah this is the hitches okay all these uh, uh, these are the hitches okay everything is a rectangular box hitch you see below it, there is a wooden box is there for everything now you know wooden means the pallet okay. sir i think you know i can, I can see only itself right okay see here yeah. every uh, box am right is a handling unit under under that you can see wooden pallets see, for every location you can see there is a gap in this one okay they attach the pallets there okay the pallet you know, you know the different pallets chap pallet euro pallets all these things depends on the size of the um, packaging material and the, within the product okay i just okay, said okay. hu means is a combination of the packaging material is a product is called a handling unit okay okay SKU means store keeping unit. Okay, SKU means store keeping unit. Okay, storage keeping unit. That the people will call it SKUs. Okay, SKU management. That's called handling unit management. <coughs> okay, that's why if I name it anything now, you you know that you exposed all the terminologies now. Okay. See now you know for you know the stacker here. Huh? You know the stacker here, there's a resource. This is again is a, is a big stacker here. You can say forklift or stacker. Yeah, both are in the same names. Yeah. Now we you know the inbound dock, you know the transportation in it, you know the mezzanine location, this is the rack locations, okay. And this is the in staging areas and maybe packing areas. Any questions, guys? Sir, what is identification point in warehouse and where is it located in the, this layout? Identification point, I'm sharing my warehouse. Why we use identification point? There are occasions, am I right? So where you uh, <clears throat> where you recepted some product. Okay. Hope you can see my warehouse layout. Okay. Yes. When sir. you yes. unload into through the door into staging area. Then HU. HU means you know rectangular box, and you know that pallet will be there all the time. Okay. When you send it a deconsolidation box center, where you because if you receipt is a larger handling unit or small or a non-homogeneous, then you unpack it and pack it into two HUs. Then you unpack and repack. Then I need to do some labeling this one. I want to put some barcodes for this. Some product labels I want to change it. So during that time, okay, I will send it to the identif identification point, okay. Then I put some labeling on this HU. Then I move the physical HU from uh, work center to here. And ID point is also work center, is also work center, okay. Then you put some label in a pocket here. Then before moving to the either mezzanine locations, 
whether it's the racking locations or like you know the different racking locations okay that is the significance of id point for example um especially in terms of layout oriented storage you know we use a lot of time id points or but even process oriented storage we use for id point okay as a part of our advanced you know i will cover complex of complex and combining two process with the poac noac and we even capturing the lifts even capturing the conveyors as a storage types and we integrate everything you know we see that how steps will go and each uh story is what activities we do there okay for the question you answered you asked me is id point is for labeling purpose we use majority or sometime we do small packing also for id point sir is it a storage type or is it a works center i just said am right no matter it is for every physical location is a captured by the storage type okay and uh, the role is we define as a work center how do you know work center by role if you define the role is a work center then it will be act as a work center is a storage type yeah for every physical location first it step is storage is. type followed by the storage section followed by the bin but section is not a mandatory section Suppose, is not anymore ewm right yeah. used yeah. to be wm it will be there but still if you want you can use it but if you don't want you don't need mandatory yeah okay but you know that now already that's what you know even the 20 people left now you know that for every physical location i should define as a storage type then i should define as a bin is not only final storage every location even door door is a storage type door one is a bin door two is a bin door three is a bin like storage is a inbound area so you know now for every how in a real time you know when you go there okay every physical location i need to capture a storage type followed by bin okay whether it is a work center or just a, a bin so you know it's all business well, how we decide whether the consolidation center then then this is the work center i will explain what steps we have to do set up as a work center and the vas work center id point packaging work centers okay all these things and also rework pack centers and scrapping centers okay so that means i take it like this uh, that is it is a storage type and can be a work center too yeah correct yeah the, the role is important inside while defining storage type the role if it's a work center there is a role for that labeling okay, okay. yeah and another question to you is uh, so stock removal uh, stock removal usually takes place from the storage type from the rack to the yeah. uh, gr staging yeah. outbound area Ma main main racks main storage area main storage area by looking this my my layout you know that this is the main storage area okay reserve area okay uh, and also mezzanine location you see the mezzanine location this is the mezzanine ground first floor second floor uh -huh, uh -huh. and okay. also okay. you see this one another racks okay my warehouse layout i have a racks both sides and in between middle i, I designed as a, uh, a mezzanine location first floor ground floor second floor okay yeah. yes sir so then you can uh, always can always move the stock between the reserve to the mezzanine or reserve to the high racks where pickable location pickable locations are high racks i define this is store as a wide aisle pick face and also i define this is a reserve area and this is one mezzanine location is a mezzanine means is a pick face mezzanine is a like a three within the warehouse you can see floors right three four floors that is called mezzanine okay, okay first floor second floor and ground floor this is the mezzanine okay this is a, a where is packing happening see this is the ground floor down yeah and uh, this is the where the conveyors are there yeah see sometimes they are using as a, a you know a steps or they use a lift or they may use a, a conveyor also to move yeah. the product and to retrieve the product yeah thanks thanks for that guys i hope you you are happy today's session because uh, you understand the now layouts you understand the you know terminologies now okay and tomorrow we will enter real time sap yeah Th thanks for your time today thank you sir you all i know it's a bit late but you know it goes like my sessions will always goes like this i know we we put a some timeline but we goes like this okay
bear in mind. Can, because... can I ask you, sir? Are you from uh, Are you from India, somewhere else? Based in the UK. Oh, UK. Okay. It's a good time for you, anyway. I think the early morning is fine. Early That's morning. Yeah. Fine. yeah. 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 Th thanks for that, sir. Yeah. See, if you have any concerns, anything, you no, know, please contact Sastra Geek. Share your experience. Share your feedback. You know what is good, what you are not good. Okay, is always you know there is a chance to improve the process. There is a chance to improve the thing. So you always give a feedback. Okay, then we will uh, act on that. Yeah, all good, sir. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, enjoy the weekend, and we'll see tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. we'll uh, with that session. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Thank okay. you. Yes, yeah, somebody is asking. Yeah, is this Kumar? Is this Sak Sakat Kumar is asking. I'm totally new to landscape. Today's session was really yeah. So good. Uh, that's what you know. The intention is uh, you know, uh, means in the cont I mean, say uh, targeting all wider context of the people. So even they don't know about warehouse, they don't know about ACP. So I'm focusing on you know for every individual so that they will understand the ACPW. Is Ramesh asking kitting? Anyway, last I will answer. Last is Ramesh. Ramesh says that if you are there, kitting means like as I said, you like you know, there is a business requirement where you want to you have a some uh, some some for job you have a engine you know manufacturing engine where you want to you do you may not go into assemble every product but you you select you pick all child products engine is a assembly and all relevant parts you pick it. And just you put into one uh, HU, okay, one handling unit. Now you know packaging material. All you you pick it and pack it and just you uh, you know put it back to the warehouse so you can deliver to the customer. C customer will assemble it. That okay. Kitting is like you know uh, collecting the all individual products and uh, pack it and uh, deliver to the customer. That is called kitting. Okay. Reverse kitting means you can uh, dismantle again. For example, some certain cases you deliver a customer, but there is problem. You will if you send it back again, you do the reverse kitting also. Okay. Yeah. Kit is a, like you know, you you can use the kit even to value their product also. You may, yes. for example, you want to do some similar uh, additional you can bonus say, kind of thing. You can buy IKEA, example, IKEA yeah. stuff. They give you all the separate parts and you know, give it to you, then we have to assemble ourselves the kind of kitting, you know. So, for example, when you buy a, a phone or anything, within the phone you can see that whereas iPhone or whether you have a phone, um, multiple box, parts. You have, yeah, you have a, all these things, charger, everything, you know. See, so all together, phone with the charger, all this, you can also call it a kit. Okay. Uh, you mean to say it's a complete package having, uh, you know, yeah, that is complete. Yeah. So, kitting, it works through the production order okay? the, through the production order the production order having a um, assembly under the assembly bill of material the bill of material means what products child parts require to as assemble that that component okay. sir if i take it in that way if i have some automobile parts you also have some service parts associated to it with it so, you know, uh, the production part with the service part, something like, you know, washers or something, that would become a, you know, this complete set is called kit, right? If I, if I had understood it correctly. Yeah, that's what, if it's, okay. a, if it's a driven by the, through the production order, then production order having an assembly and under the... Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Assembly have a bill of material, then through that order, you know, you perform all the kitting activities. Okay. For example, you know, you may not uh, assemble here. Okay. For example, uh, you want to do some third party. What do you do? You pick all the products, child product, and you deliver to the third party. They will assemble. They will assemble and send it back to us. Okay. okay? Yeah, why so, a bill yeah. of material? Why a bomb? A bomb, yeah. Bill of material. That's through the production yeah. order. That's what I mean. Yeah. Make it, it works with it through the production order. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, note boards or fasteners is also part of the kitting part. Pardon? What is it? What do you ask? 
So nut board fasteners also is a part of the kitting. No, no, these are the storage areas. Anything else? Oh, so Ramesh is asking what is a wave, okay? Wave is a, is a, is a simple terminology. What happens is, you know, you get a lot of customer orders. Am I right? Releasing you get a hundreds of customer orders. You get a hundreds of outbound delivery system creates. Against the outbound delivery, you, you plan it. Can you release it one outbound delivery to perform activities, picking and packing? Or you want to optimize everything combined into one so that, you know, whether I tooth one customer place three, four orders so that if I combine it, I can deliver one time. I can pick it all one time. Okay. Assume that I have a same product, different customers placed it so that can I go one time, pick all the customers one time or I, every order I have to go and pick it. Like how you want to optimize it, your picking uh, tasks. Okay. So what you do is you get all outbound deliveries, you combine it and you, you sort out based on the your activity areas. Okay. Whether my product, my customer, three, four customers placed one product, it is lying in the one location. So all it's clubbing all the customer or customer order products uh, into one so that we create a one warehouse task so that one or two warehouse tasks, you know, so the warehouse clerk will go there and he will pick it and he will pack it. He will drop at the pack location. Okay. See, at the end of the day, you want to optimize the picking tasks. You cannot go for one by line by line, go and pick it and drop it, go and pick it and drop it. Right. So you can optimize the picking warehouse tasks by go, by adopting wave. Okay. There are so many concepts. How you do the wave. Okay. How you can combine it. How your system will create a different warehouse task. Okay. How you can segregate the warehouse task. Okay. Where is the product? Okay. If it's a similar product having a customer place uh, different products, then how you are going to get it? How you are going to segregate it? Okay. So all these things. What basis you are going to do the wave manage wave is a based on the route, based on the ship to party. If it's the same ship to party, then you assign everything into one, one wave. Okay. If it is a different route, then I will assign a different route. Okay. It's a simple terminology, you combine all the orders into one, then you segregate into uh, warehouse tasks. Okay, such a way that you can improve the picking warehouse efficiency. Is it is it a warehouse? One more thing, sir. Is it like wave management does happens like you know uh, within the warehouse labor and shift wise, and so many other things also involved, right? When we release the yes, picks yeah. to the warehouse. We have a certain criteria. You create a wave template, whether it is a Rust, Rust wave template, a standard wave template, or kits, or customer a vendor returns, or like that. First, we yeah. define the yeah. template. Then we define okay. what base is based on that route. How system is going to trigger which wave, which uh, uh, wave for them? Is the ship to party or route based on the route? There are so, several criteria. Like state wide, you know, district wide, street wide. It is applicable for picking. Yes, is the only for is the only for outbound. Okay, wave concepts is only used for outbound, not inbound. Inbound we don't need any. Okay, okay. only outbound picking. Only out yeah, we can answer all the questions. You know, even if you have something in uh, in your mind, so don't worry. We will uh, clear everything, every doubt. Okay, but don't hesitate to ask. Okay. No problem. Even a silly question, if it's a good question or a bad question, okay, you ask, okay? But don't keep it in your mind. Okay. Sir, one question to you, last question to you. So during the festival seasons, we definitely look out for efficient warehouse, uh, you know, uh, efficiently warehouse will you know, do work. So how do you expect orders? For example, yeah, Arizona. Yeah. See, it depends on the type of warehouse, you know. Uh, whether it is a retail, whether it is a distribution center, whether manufacturing industry or food industry. Okay. As I said, like, you know, fast moving and slow moving. Okay. We will define certain racking such as a fast moving and slow moving. We will, we will define seasonal products, which is a, like, for example, you know, based as we ask them, festival time, retail industry, they, because they, they a lot of, uh, you know, the products, they have a lot of demand. So we will keep demand products up front. And if they will put other uh, non-demand non products in the backside, that means we will design such a way that warehouse structure. So we keep 
fast moving items very close to the picking picking area so that customer uh, picker can easily go and pick it and the non demand item will keep to the back side so that's what we will define and also like you know some controls will be there system will propose fast moving and slow moving what date what time will define such a way that system will propose automatically it changes flip flop that okay which is a fast and which is a slow moving or which is a seasonal product product i just said i'm right uh, if it is a food product when you recept it it may not stay long from the some of the products maybe 10 days 5 days our system will propose for us okay based on the shelf life expiration date and you know which our goods recept okay there is a concept in a stock removal and put away strategy such a way that system proposes okay there's a business requirement also which product should come first whether goods recepted one first or based on the life if it is the 10 days is already 5 days but another product we got that 6 days is there but 5 days self life we you system propose 5 days one rather than 6 days for 6 days means still one day is left am right so always system propose 5 days product because 6 days product still we have one more days left so like you know yeah if is you go find keeps, details you know so people and leafers yeah so so it depends on industry guys you see that's what this wm can be implemented any warehouse the distribution center the business requirement different if it is a food industry the business requirement different if it is a manufacturing the different so oil and gas like yeah is so a manufacturing if it is a warehouse the linkage with the manufacturing the requirements are different okay we will give a overview for everything but yeah if you learn one 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 uh, you know sap wm you know one training that's more than enough we can always on the job you can learn some of things even if you, you do not have much experience on that but the concepts remain same the basics remain same if you good on this concept that's it you can implement any industry thank you sir okay thank you very much you guys that too late for you guys okay yeah. uh, take care and we will see you tomorrow yeah thanks for your patience as well that's at the end of the day how much you show a patience it reflects my side as well but as yeah. i said like you know some people will be um timing constraint yeah i know it's because of uh, geographical timing difference between india and uk us and you know, australia and new zealand but yeah you know asastra geek is trying their best and my availability and uh, you know your availability and it's, it's a challenge you know because to the different job couple of things to capture yeah that's what i even i accepted a morning to accommodate and the sunday is different yeah. Okay. so make it at least couple of hours uh, strict sir then yeah it's fine yeah okay okay yeah thank you very much